you are dreaming, everything you have ever experienced, everything you have ever seen, heard, felt, or touched was just a dream. You have never actually touched the real world because there isn't one. Science is finally now catching up with what people have been saying for thousands of years in the ancient world. That is that reality is not out there. Reality is in here. It is a projection of our own minds, shaped by our karma and ego. There is no separation between the inside and outside world. Everything arises out of consciousness. People all across the ancient world were aware of this non-dualistic nature of reality. Today, we will focus on ancient Tibet and its people's understanding of life as a never-ending dream. From this perspective, they were able to map out the landscape of the various dream states we may find ourselves in, and even provide us a guide for waking up. But before we get into that, let's make sure that the science holds up. I've got two scientists ready to talk about how their work may be hinting at a dreamlike nature of reality. First up, let's hear what the physicist has to say about how reality is generated by an observer. How does physics give credence to the theory that reality is just a dream? Well, you see, at the quantum level, reality doesn't seem to exist until we look at it. At the heart of quantum mechanics lies the idea that particles like electrons or photons don't exist until they are observed. Instead, they exist as a fuzzy cloud of possibility, called a superposition, meaning they are in multiple places at the same time. But the moment we observe the particle, this cloud of possibility collapses and the particle chooses one definite position to be in. It's as if the very act of looking creates the reality that we experience. Before we look, everything is uncertain, but once we observe it, boom, everything is locked into place. Sounds like science fiction, right? But this is a real phenomenon that has been repeatedly confirmed by experiments, and it hints at something profound. What if reality only exists when we observe it? What if our consciousness is playing a direct role in shaping the reality we see around us. Interesting, so the outside world exists, but only in a probability state. So in other words, this green screen is probably there behind me, but it's not definitely there until I turn around and look at it. But how can I be sure that the thing I'm looking at is the thing that's really there? How good are our brains at taking in the information from the outside world and accurately reporting what it finds. Let's hear what the neuroscientist has to say about our interpretation of the world around us. Now, how does neuroscience give credence to the idea that reality is a dream? Well, we often think of our senses as windows to the world around us, seeing what's really out there, hearing the true sounds of life, but neuroscience tells us something completely different. Our brains don't just passively receive information. They actually construct our reality. And one of the clearest ways we can see this in action is through something you experience in every moment of your life, your blind spot. In each of your eyes, there is a hole in your vision, an area where the optic nerve connects to your retina. In this spot, there are no photoreceptor cells, meaning there is absolutely no data coming in from that part of the world. You are literally blind in that region. Here's how to find your blind spot yourself. Step one, hold both thumbs up at arm's length side by side in front of you. Step two, close one eye. Step three, Focus on the opposite side thumb while being aware of the other still in your peripheral vision. So if you've closed your left eye, you're going to want to focus on your right thumb. Step four, slowly move the unfocused thumb outward at the right spot around six inches apart 
it will slowly vanish completely. But here's the crazy part. There's no black void where your thumb should be. Your brain fills in the empty space, tricking you into seeing a seamless world. This means that your brain isn't just receiving information like a camera. It literally constructs reality, filling in gaps based on expectation, memory, and context to create a model of the world. Essentially, our brain is guessing what's out there and then using those guesses to interpret the incoming data. Now, what does this all mean? Well, it means that the reality we experience isn't necessarily the one that's out there. Instead, it's a simulation created by our brain, an internal model that's shaped by what we've seen before, what we expect, and even our personal biases. Our perception is not an objective window into the world. It is a subjective reconstruction. So in a sense, our waking life is already kind of like a dream. One where our brain constantly fills in the gaps, creating a world that feels real, but may not be exactly as it seems. So if I'm understanding correctly, what neuroscience is telling us is that we live in a simulation created for us by our own minds. The people of ancient Tibet understood this, and although they didn't conduct any science experiments, they used themselves as test subjects. Through meditation, mindfulness, near-death experiences, and other altered states of consciousness, they were able to create a map of the various dream states that we pass through, through life, death, and rebirth. This map was written into a guidebook called the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Traditionally named Liberation Through Hearing in the Intermediate State, this book was read to people after they die to help them pass through the intermediate state between death and rebirth, with the ultimate goal of aiding in their escape from this never-ending dream. Want to learn more about what happens after we die and how we might be able to wake up from this dream? Go ahead and check out the next video in this mini-series where I explain the Tibetan bardos and their metaphysical understanding of this strange reality that we find ourselves in. Leave a like if you want to see more of my content. That is the best way to show your support for the channel and to let the YouTube algorithm know that you want to see more of me. I'll see you in the next video. Stay curious, everyone.